<laughs> oh, well, hello there, library goers, students, and people of Ontario. It's your old friend Jay Ojik, uh, artist, writer, and television producer from the Kitigan ZB Anishinaabe community in Quebec. And uh, here today on National Truth and Reconciliation Day, we thought it might be a good idea to kind of take a look back at my career and some of the things that I've been lucky and blessed enough to do. So without any further ado, pull up a seat, get comfy, and uh, would you please join me in taking a look back at my career and some of my work. Not all of my work, because that video would probably take about three hours, but some of the more important things, the bigger things that I've done, and things that people seem to really enjoy, at least from what I've seen or been told anyway. So uh, hope if you're not familiar, you find something that you might like. So let's get to it. So let's take a look and start off with Kagagi the Raven, which was a graphic novel that I wrote and drew. I created the character Kagagi. And this was published by a Canadian company called Arcana Comics. At the time, uh, Canada's largest comic book publisher, at least in terms of like volume, the number of books that they put out. I had self-published three books myself called The Raven. They were black and white, uh, single issues. And I met up with Arcana at a comic convention in Toronto, Ontario, and we uh, came up with a deal to bring Kagagi over to the Arcana banner. And what that brought to the table for me was the ability to distribute Kagagi far and wide to basically any comic book shop in North America that wanted to carry the title. So it was a huge jump up from where we began or where I began with Kagagi, which was self-publishing out of a basement on the res. So we went from like self-publishing and me mailing out single issues of this comic to basically being distributed across North America. As far as I'm aware, it's still the only native created native superhero book to be carried by Diamond Comics distributors and thus available uh, in every comic shop. Uh, first native comic created, superhero comic created by a native creator anyway. So it's something I'm fiercely proud of. And the book did very well, well enough in fact that I was fortunate enough to be able to adapt it into an animated series. So what you're seeing here is the poster for the animated series Kagagi, which aired on APTN here in Canada, on FNX in the United States, and NITV in Australia. So we were broadcast basically internationally. It was a half hour show with uh, language versions, not only in English, but English and Algonquin. There was one completely in Anish Anishinaabe Moin and one with 20% uh, Algonquin or Anishinaabe Moin. So that was something I was very, very proud of. It was cool to be able to bring uh, the world's first ever indigenous superhero television series to life and have my own animated series. I mean, that's the dream as a kid, right? Who could have ever thought that this kid from the res who just loved drawing would someday get the chance to make his own TV show. So very cool. And uh, if you've ever checked it out, I hope you dug it. Kagagi will always have a special place in my heart. Black Flies. Ah, yes. The book you also egomaniacally caught me reading of my own. Um, Black Flies was a really, really cool thing. Uh, published by Scholastic Canada. And again, written by Robert Munch, who is probably, I would say, the biggest name in children's book writing. And in my opinion, he's the GOAT. He's the greatest of all time. Uh, greatest children's book writer, greatest uh, storyteller for younger readers, early readers uh, that we've ever seen in the game. And uh, to get the chance to draw a book written by Bob is a huge honor. It was something that I approached with a great deal of uh, hesitancy and, and a little bit of concern because my comic book, my style really comes from uh, drawing comic books. And you can see a lot of the animation and American comic book influences in my art, which is different from a lot of the stuff that we've seen before with uh, Robert Munch titles. And those artists are all fantastic. So I wanted to bring something new, uh, a bit of my own flavor to things and, and see how it would do. And luckily people really seem to gravitate towards it. And it's something that kids really enjoy. So it worked out pretty well. And Black Flies was an important book, I think, uh, not just for me, but for a lot of people. Because Black Flies represented um, a book that was carried in basically every bookstore across the country with an all-native cast of characters set in a First Nations community. So Black Flies was really cool and it was, it was awesome to be able to go into any bookstore and find this depiction of a heroic young native girl standing there looking like some kind of superhero. It was really awesome and I... 
everybody involved in this, uh, the crew at Scholastic and everything was great, really supportive of me and everything I did here and making this possible. And, and so was Robert. So this will always be special for me because it was my first real foray into uh, children's picture books coming from where I came from of comics and animation. That was uh, an entirely new industry, a new part of my career. And it's something that has really worked out well. So I'd like to thank everybody who has picked up or read a copy of Black Flies. And uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, we can do something like this again in the future. There's some of the coolest stuff that I think uh, that I really enjoyed doing in this book was doing different shapes with the swarm of flies and mosquitoes like the clouds. And we see just one shot where the, the swarm of black flies and mosquitoes forms a giant hand. So you can see some of my comic influences creeping through and... Uh, it was a lot of fun, and I hope you had fun reading it. Ah, uh, yes, Bear for Breakfast. What can I say about this book? Uh, my second collaboration with Bob. Uh, another team-up between Ojik and Munch. Uh, another bestseller, which was really awesome to see. And uh, Bear for Breakfast is cool in that, much like Black Flies, it has an all-native cast of characters that's set in a First Nations community. But this time around, we did things a little different. And, and like I said, Scholastic has always been great about supporting me and getting behind me and believing in me. And one of the things they did, uh, even though we're not seeing that cover here, um, they published a version of this book, Bear for Breakfast, in Anishinaabe movie. So you could uh, get the book in any bookstore in Algonquin. There's also an audio book version of it that's available through Scholastic. So if you'd like to follow along with the text in Algonquin and actually hear the spoken words so you can learn some pronunciation, it's a great resource tool. Really cool, uh, kind of a dream come true situation for me. The idea of creating books in native languages is something that I hope we can definitely see more of because there's definitely a need for it. We're losing our speakers at a ever-increasing rate. So anything we can do to help keep our languages strong and alive would be fantastic. And uh, just taking a look at one of the interior pages here is a, a page uh, that was a lot of fun for me to draw from this kind of worm's eye, eye view perspective, looking up at Donovan, the kid in the book, who uh, has decided he wants to eat bear for breakfast. And on his hunt, he encounters this little ant. But you can see the uh, Anishinaabe Moween text placed under the English there. So a very cool project, something that uh, I'm very, very proud of. And it always means a lot to me when I meet with parents who uh, are using it to help give their kids an entryway into the Algonquin language because that's uh that's very important so another really important book my second team up with Robert who's just a great guy and I, I can't say enough great things about and uh, I hope if you read both of these books you enjoyed both of them if you ask me to pick a favorite I can't uh they're like they're like my children and you can't pick a favorite kid even though we all know every parent has a favorite right <laughs> and I was that favorite just kidding. Apologies to my brothers. Ah, something a little bit different. Like I said, uh, when we first started talking, maybe we'll take a look at some things I've done that haven't necessarily been in books that have still been art related. And this is definitely one of those things that I think is really cool. Um, if you're not familiar with this, this is a, a design that I created for the Ottawa Senators NHL team for their Indigenous Cultural Awareness Night. And I've included it here just because it's one of those things that, again, as a kid who started out just, you know, drawing uh, as a young boy on the res, I, I got good at drawing because in all honesty, um, <laughs> all the other kids played hockey. And having moved to my dad's community of Kittigan Zibi from where I was born, uh, Rochester, New York, um, I didn't know how to skate very well. So I had to do something in the winters. And in those harsh winters that we get, as you know, uh, it, it, there's not a lot to do if, if you're not great at hockey. So I developed uh, a passion and a skill at drawing, I'd like to think. And to get the chance to design a piece for an NHL team was a really big honor, especially growing up uh, a big hockey fan. And my cousin Gino played for the Vancouver Canucks, the Montreal Canadiens, the Flyers, and the New York Islanders. So as a kid who grew up on the res and, and loved watching hockey and had a cousin who played in the NHL, I think it was real cool for me to get the... Uh, the chance to do something like this it was a real honor to, to work with the senators on it and i hope you dig it i've included a graphic here that kind of explains some of the design choices and things that i implemented into the, the, the design to give it a, a bit of an algonquin authentic algonquin flavor and it's just real cool to see these kind of bigger companies big organizations 
reaching out, getting us involved, getting authentic indigenous voices involved in creating things like this. And I think it's just great for, for everybody, especially kids who want to play in the NHL someday, or maybe kids like me who can't skate well enough to do that and instead are picking up a pencil. It just kind of lets uh, people know that we're seen, we're still here, our cultures are still vibrant and dynamic, and it was a real, real honor to do, and I hope you dig the design I did for the Sens. Go Sens, go! Apologies to all the Leafs fans out there. You know it's nothing personal. All right, so that's it for a look at my career, my work, and some of the things I've been lucky and blessed enough to do. Uh, it's been a real wild ride the past few years getting to work in everything from animation, television, to comic books, kids' book, picture books, and so many other things in between. I think it's important on a day like today, uh, on National Truth and Reconciliation Day, to reflect and give some thought to the fact that whether we be First Nations, Native, or non-Native Canadians, we are sharing this land, sharing this country. And uh, books and art present a great and unique way for us to learn about one another's cultures, and more than anything else, I think, connect with one another. It's very important that we learn to... Uh, get along with and not only get along with but learn to respect and appreciate our neighbors so i hope this has been a a good time i hope you've enjoyed hanging out with me here and learning about some of my work and some of the things that i've done and uh if you'd like to learn more about like native cultures artists creators writers feel free to go check out your local library and take out a book by a, an indigenous writer or artist such as myself till next time i guess i'll catch you down the road miigwech peace